Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Chancer. We are at game week five already, which is very, very hard to believe. And we're bringing you two shows this week. I'm going to drop another on Friday morning after Manchester United play Southampton on Thursday. I'll record a quick little video and then we'll put it up on Friday morning. So it's actually Man United and Leicester, apologies. But uh, yeah, Friday we're going to bring you another show. I'm just going to kick back and look at last week for me now. Okay, so I replaced Gavin Bazunu last week with Sanchez from Brighton and it paid dividends obviously with a clean sheet Brighton have been very very good at the back and Bazunu unfortunately for Southampton they, they haven't got much in defence so I, I really had to change it I was looking to leave him in and see how it goes but it's not going well at the moment so I had to change it up I went with White and Saliba again as the double from Arsenal um, it didn't really pay off in terms of clean sheets, but William Saliba has popped up with another assist. So now William Saliba, four games in fantasy football, he's got two clean sheets, one goal and one assist so far. So at 4.5, he's rose now to 4.6. He's going to keep rising and after that. So it'd be a good time if you're planning on getting Saliba in, probably get him in now because his price and his valuation is going to, is going to keep going up. And I'd expect him to go up to probably at least five this side of Christmas. Nathan Collins I put back in again. Uh, Wolves, unfortunate not to keep a clean sheet, but I think there's potential there for clean sheets for Wolves throughout the season. <clears throat> Into the midfield. The whole midfield for me this week flattered to deceive. So if you're looking at Son, he still can't get off the mark yet at uh, Tottenham. I was thinking about maybe switching him in with De Bruyne, but I'm going to leave him in for another while, see how it goes. Mo Salah, Liverpool beaten Bournemouth 9-0 and actually Scott Parker losing his job off the back of that this morning as well. So for Liverpool to get nine and for Salah to register no goals and assists, I think is quite frankly remarkable. I don't think it's something that you'll see too often. Uh, Declan Rice, he popped up with an assist and I've since got him out. We'll get into that in a minute. And Lavia didn't deliver against Manchester United. Now the front three, all barring Jesus delivered this week. So you had Harry Kane, got two goals. Of course, he missed a penalty and got a yellow card. So he was minus three points overall. <laughs> Still a good tally of 10 there for him. Gabriel Jesus didn't unfortunately register at him this week and he was my captain. So that did not pay off. And Erling Haaland, of course, hat-trick, 17 points. The guy is absolutely on fire at the moment. So, you know, whilst I didn't get the captain choice right, I still got a total of 61 points. So I'm pretty happy with that and didn't miss anything really on my bench there as you can see so that worked out well from that perspective this week so if we look at the league the upper tier now we have a new leader there at the moment dave maloney with an absolute crack and score this week of 91 points 92 points in fact sorry so if we look at dave's team there he had Allison for clean sheet, Van Dijk 12 points, Reese James 7, Gabrielle 9, Rashford 3, Rodrigo 2, Luis Diaz 14, Odegaard 10, Kane 10, Haaland 17, and Jesus. Unfortunately, he was his captain or he would have come up with more points as well. So that's a very, very good game week score there. So we're looking into this week now. And obviously fixtures tonight, Tuesday, tomorrow night, Wednesday. And Thursday as well, we round out with Manchester United. So I went with Sanchez in goal. Got to keep with him now for a while. Fulham away. There's definitely potential for a clean sheet here with the way Brighton defend. Uh, the next two then, I'm going for Saliba and White again. Uh, with the hope that Arsenal can capitalise on Villa's poor form. And um, even as I said, Saliba, you see them there with the star beside him. He's one of the top scoring uh, defenders in the league so far. So he could definitely rack up some points in terms of goal or assist as well. Nathan Collins, I'm going to leave in Bournemouth away. Uh, Bournemouth, of course, we don't know what kind of animal they're going to be now after sacking Scott Parker. And it's going to be interesting to see who they bring in. Maybe I think it might be a little bit harsh on Parker to go, but I guess that 9-0 you know, I th I think they're probably scared the owners that they might be not come no coming back from a score like that. So we just have to wait and see how it goes. The middle of the park, massive London derby this week with West Ham and Tottenham Hotspur. So I'm going to leave Son in my team again. See how he goes. Mo Salah home to Newcastle. Yeah, I think Newcastle are going to be like a strong entity at home. 
this year for sure. But I think away from home, as they proved there the other day, that against Wolves, like it, it's not going to be too easy for them. They're trying to build St. James's Park into a fortress, but can they deliver that off the road when, when their backs are against the wall? I'm not so sure. Uh, I've got into Silva this week instead of Declan Rice. Um, West Ham weren't playing very well. I know Declan Rice came up with an assist the last game round, but I'm going to go with the silver for a while and see how that goes. And then I have Pereira there at home to Brighton. I think it'd be a difficult game for Fulham that one, but you know, there's potential there possibly, possibly to get something. And then if we look at the front three, I'm going with Kane. I'm going to go with Jesus as captain again, because it's coming to the nitty gritty time now for Man City. The Champions League's coming up next week to fixtures in a week and potentially three and ten days so i think that there may be scope for a few changes for man city this week and that always fucks with people's fantasy team when pep guardiola starts the old pep roulette as it's called and takes different players out uh erling Haaland's obviously been instrumental so far for man city but is he going to rest him with the champions league in mind next week and a game that they're expected to win really this game week round against nottingham forest at home so i would go with haaland but i'm just kind of cautious that maybe he will rest him and maybe i'm wrong i don't know but i know one thing's for sure jesus is playing every game for arsenal this season so i'm going to go with jesus villa are in poor form steven Gerrard really needs to get something out of this game their backs are against the wall um but there's potential you just never know in football though aston villa could pick up something then on the bench i don't really think i'm missing out too much on the bench this week so there's no point in playing the bench boost or anything like that i have ward lavia patterson nico williams he's going to be up against it against man city so you know i'm pretty happy with what i have so far and you know i scored 61 points last week if i can get at least 50 a week i'm very happy so that's my team now let's just go to have a look at gabriel jesus there for a second and his statistics because they're crazy and um, view information he's owned by 81.2 percent of players that is absolutely bonkers i think it's the highest that they were saying in fantasy football history and it just comes down to the fact that you know at eight he was eight million he's 8.2 now but just at that price initially it was kind of too much for people to give up so another very interesting game week i'm going to be back on friday morning going to record a video late thursday night before i go to amsterdam for the weekend and i'll be keeping an eye on the football over there and that's pretty much it for this game week anyway guys best of luck to everyone and we'll see you again soon